We are all familiar with the order of operations, a way to order computations in a math problem. But how does Bubble order actions in a workflow? My name is Anya, and this is Original Strokes. I'm going to be explaining this based on a diagram compiled by Jessica Getty, who is a freelancer. The work I think this diagram perfectly sums it up, and I'm just going to be drawing it out again. But it's really Jessica's work that I'm sharing with you guys today. Imagine you have an event, like a button being clicked. This then triggers two actions. You have step one and step two. But contrary to the way I've drawn this, it's actually not sequential like this because step two does not wait until step one is done. This means that sometimes you're going to have step two reliant on something in step one and there are going to be errors in your code or things aren't going to work in your application because it's not one after the other. Instead, Bubble tries to run them in parallel to make processing faster. So instead of having it drawn out like this, I'm going to keep it like this. So it's drawn a little more fluidly. Now, this event tries to run both of these actions, but let's say the event also includes a backend workflow. This is a little bit more advanced, but it's still important functionality to know how to use for more complicated applications. Now this backend workflow starts when event starts. Even though it's written as step three, it actually, actually executes right off the bat. Now, after the backend workflow, let's say we have a custom event. This then triggers two actions, and they are run fluidly in the same way that these two are run. Now, after the custom event, let's say we create a new thing. Now, we want to do something with this new thing. One of the ways of doing this is saying, do a search for this thing. But because these are run fluidly like this and like this, this search may or may not result in this. The better, the better thing to do is instead of doing a search for the new thing, use is to look at the result of the previous step. This will always find whatever new object this made. So therefore, this is reliable. Just to recap, this tells you a couple important things. One, step two does not wait till step one occurs. So if step two relies on step one in any way, this may or may not. This may not work. If you use a backend workflow, you know that this will always start when the event starts, regardless of what these actions are. Likewise, if you use a custom workflow, it will do the things in the custom workflow before going to the next action. If you need to know that one is done before step five, the best way is to use a custom workflow. Additionally, when you try to create a new object in a workflow, doing a search for the new object you just made by searching for by searching for name is not good because sometimes it won't find the new thing. A much better way to do it is to reference the result of step five. 
as this is reliable and will always get you whatever object was created in step five. This is all about action sequence. So when you write actions in a workflow, you know what happens when and how to get your desired result. Jessica also includes some helpful things about scalability and designing your workflows in general. Instead of having an event and then doing an action if something is true, for example, you have a group and you're saying if you're have, you have a group and a button and you say if you say when button pressed, this is the trigger event. So when event, if group visible, hide or if hidden, show, which might ha cause weird things because we know these don't go one after the other. So let's say it was visible at first and then you hide it and then you check if it's hidden and you show it. So you might end up not having the workflow sequence be what you want. And then also scalability wise, it's just better to do check for the event, which can be the same across, and then have different if conditions. Thank you so much. I hope this was helpful.